In complex analysis, the Riemann mapping theorem states that if U is a non-empty simply connected open subset of the complex number plane C which is not all of C, then there exists a biholomorphic mapping F from U onto the open unit disk. This mapping is known as a Riemann mapping. Intuitively, the condition that U be simply connected means that U does not contain any holes. The fact that F is biholomorphic implies that it is a conformal map and therefore angle-preserving. Intuitively, such a map preserves the shape of any sufficiently small figure, while possibly rotating and scaling it. Henry Poincaré proved that the map F is essentially unique. If Z0 is an element of U and phi is an arbitrary angle, then there exists precisely one F as above such that F equals 0 and that the argument of the derivative of F at the point Z0 is equal to phi. This is an easy consequence of the Schwartz lemma. As a corollary of the theorem, any two simply connected open subsets of the Riemann sphere which both lack at least two points of the sphere can be conformally mapped into each other. History the theorem was stated by Bernhard Riemann in 1851 in his Ph.D. thesis. Lars Alphas wrote once, concerning the original formulation of the theorem, that it was ultimately formulated in terms which would defy any attempt of proof, even with modern methods. Riemann's flawed proof depended on the Dirichlet principle, which was considered sound at the time. However, Karl Weierstrass found that this principle was not universally valid. Later, David Hilbert was able to prove that, to a large extent, the Dirichlet principle is valid under the hypothesis that Riemann was working with. However, in order to be valid, the Dirichlet principle needs certain hypotheses concerning the boundary of U which are not valid for simply connected domains in general. Simply connected domains with arbitrary boundaries were first treated by William Fogg Osgood. The first proof of the theorem is due to Konstantin Karathayadori, who published it in 1912. His proof used Riemann surfaces and it was simplified by Paul Kober two years later in a way which did not require them. Another proof, due to Lipot Fej Lukutar and to Frigis Rees, was published in 1922 and it was rather shorter than the previous ones. In this proof, like in Riemann's proof, the desired mapping was obtained as the solution of an extremal problem. The Fej Lukutari's proof was further simplified by Alexander Ostrovsky and by Karathayadori. Importance the following points detail the uniqueness and power of the Riemann mapping theorem. Even relatively simple Riemann mappings have no explicit formula using only elementary functions. Simply connected open sets in the plane can be highly complicated. For instance the boundary can be a nowhere differentiable fractal curve of infinite length, even if the set itself is bounded. The fact that such a set can be mapped in an angle-preserving manner to the nice and regular unit disk seems counterintuitive. The analog of the Riemann mapping theorem for more complicated domains is not true. The next simplest case is of doubly connected domains. Any doubly connected domain except for the punctured disk and the punctured plane is conformally equivalent to some annulus Z, R less than Z less than 1, with 0 less than R less than 1. However, there are no conformal maps between annuli except inversion and multiplication by constants, so the annulus Z. 1 less than Z less than 2 is not conformally equivalent to the annulus Z. 1 less than Z less than 4. The analog of the Riemann mapping theorem in three or more real dimensions is not true. The family of conformal maps in three dimensions is very poor and essentially contains only Mobius transformations. Even if arbitrary homeomorphisms in higher dimensions are permitted, contractible manifolds can be found that are not homeomorphic to the ball. The Riemann mapping theorem is the easiest way to prove that any two simply connected domains in the plane are homeomorphic. Even though the class of continuous functions is vastly larger than that of conformal maps, it is not easy to construct a one-to-one -one function onto the disk knowing only that the domain is simply connected. A proof sketch. 
Given u and a point z0 in u, we want to construct a function f which maps u to the unit disk and z0 to 0. For this sketch, we will assume that u is bounded and its boundary is smooth, much like Riemann did. Write where g equals u plus i v is some holomorphic function with real part u and imaginary part v. It is then clear that z0 is the only zero of f. We require f equals 1 for zu, so we need on the boundary. Since u is the real part of a holomorphic function, we know that u is necessarily a harmonic function, i.e., it satisfies Laplace's equation. The question then becomes, does a real valued harmonic function u exist that is defined on all of u and has the given boundary condition? The positive answer is provided by the Dirichlet principle. Once the existence of U has been established, the Cauchy-Riemann equations for the holomorphic function G allow us to find V. Once U and V have been constructed, one has to check that the resulting function F does indeed have all the required properties. Uniformization theorem. The Riemann mapping theorem can be generalized to the context of Riemann surfaces. If U is a non-empty simply connected open subset of a Riemann surface, then U is biholomorphic to one of the following, the Riemann sphere, C or D. This is known as the uniformization theorem, smooth Riemann mapping theorem. In the case of a simply connected bounded domain with smooth boundary, the Riemann mapping function and all its derivatives extend by continuity to the closure of the domain. This can be proved using regularity properties of solutions of the Dirichlet boundary value problem, which follow either from the theory of Sobolev spaces for planar domains or from classical potential theory. Other methods for proving the smooth Riemann mapping theorem include the theory of kernel functions or the Beltrami equation.